What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Dan of the Almighty Pathology. Thanks for being here today, man. It's great to have you here. Cool. What's up, guys? Not much, man. It's <laughs> awesome to have you here. So I'm sure that both you and every single one of your bandmates have been are going to be, this is probably going to be the first question every single one of you are going to be asked, but the new album Everlasting Plague, first of all, this album is awesome, so excellent work on this, but uh, there's no denying that the album title was influenced by everything we've witnessed the last uh, nearly two years, right? Yeah, definitely, and hopefully the plague is not going to be everlasting that we're experiencing right now, dude, like uh, hold on, sorry, I got a call, we're not going to answer that, so it's all good. Uh, yeah, but yeah no that was definitely a big influence with everything going on and um yeah so it's it's interesting times that we're you know everybody's experiencing right now especially for musicians too you know like not being able to like we haven't done any shows or anything since this started yeah i know and uh highly depressing (laughs) and it sucks yeah uh we did go to our first show as the band we went together to our first show with uh the fire murder and uh, after the burial, like that was just last week. Oh wow! So that was our first. Yeah, that was our first show that we got to go to, uh, and that was a lot of fun. You yeah. Know, so that's going to be the yeah, death anyway. metal tour of the year. <laughs> but um, yeah. So it's fair to say that this isn't just a direct continuation off of your previous album, uh, "Reborn to Kill." This is almost kind of like a new beginning in a way for Pathology, in a way, right? Or maybe kind of like a standout record in the catalog. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I, you know, for me, like this record, uh, like Reborn to Kill, like that was kind of like, you know, the lineup was still, that was like our first record with this current lineup, you know, so it was still kind of feeling it out and seeing how that writing process and creative process can work. And then this one is just more dialed in. Now we like know kind of more what we're doing. And that's why I think it turned out like, I think it turned out a lot different than Reborn to Kill. Yeah. And in a good way, you know, and I'm like, I know, I'm really happy with it. So, well, Reborn to Kill was your first album with Pathology as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that yes. Was, that was so, when you joined Pathology, and you know, you were going into that sort of process with uh, Reborn to Kill, were you kind of like looking at earlier albums such as Age of Onset or Surgically Hacked, being like, okay, this is how I have to play. This is what the Pathology sound is about, or were you kind of allowed, being that you've played with a lot of other bands such as uh, Condemned and Fury Never Fades and stuff, that you were maybe allowed to kind of like bring in a little bit of your own mix into Pathology? That's cool. You mentioned Fury, dude. That was yeah, that's an old band. Uh, no, good question. Like, because I was like a huge fan of pathology forever, you know? And so like time of great purification and like awakening to the suffering, like those were like, that was like my shit, you know, my gym jams. And, uh, (laughs) yeah. So it's funny to like be a part of it now and be writing albums for it. So of course I kept those, you know, that history in mind. Um, but I think a lot of it, I just tried to do kind of my own thing or, or kind of our own thing, you know, like with, that one and we, we did, wrote a lot of that actually just at the rehearsal space in dave's garage it was just us getting together and jamming wow you know? and that was a cool process it was different for me you know than the other bands that i've been in and uh i thought it turned out pretty cool and but this one we kind of did the same thing but it was more uh homework you know i got to like sit down and really be like you know right i guess you know and, and that's what's a lot of fun for guitars at least so. yeah well uh, because from what you were telling me about like we're born to kill it seemed like it was like a very organic process it was like a jam you know you kind of like uh, formulated in a very old school way but uh with the everlasting yeah. plague nobody was allowed to be around each other so it, it's fair to say that like the songwriting process between reborn to kill and this is almost kind of like a night and day experience right that's exactly why yeah that's totally why yeah because we're not playing shows we're not really even having band practice. I mean, we get together and like kind of start the idea. We plant the seed, right? And then like it would turn into something completely different working on it at home uh, from the computer. So, yeah. Okay. But did maybe like this type of songwriting process maybe uh, uh, teach you or the rest of the band new like tricks and twists? You know, they always say isolation is a great fuel for creativity, especially in this genre. So like I'd imagine that like uh, – maybe you learned some new things where you maybe like experimenting with some new uh, gizmos and gadgets as well to kind of, uh, you know, explore this creative realm. Yeah, absolutely. It just kind of gave us time to like really 
take in and, and try things differently that uh, we normally probably wouldn't even think of on the spot. You know, like when you're in a gym, when you're together with the guys, you know, and it's just like, and there's so many distractions with, when you're with your bandmates, you know, because people on their phones, you're making jokes, maybe having some drinks, you know, just having, you know, hanging with your buddies, you know, but when you're at home, you can kind of like really just focus, you know, and hear it. For me, I would like kind of hear the direction in my head, you know, like, okay, or, or a, like the writing process, dude, like I would like play a riff over and over and I would try different things. Like, why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? And it's like an elimination process, you know, and you're like, oh, I think this is going to be the final one we're going to go with. Yeah. So there was more of that going on. You know? mm-hmm. Do you think that the first singles that you released off of the Everlasting Plague, like a, such as, you know, as the entrails wither, like is almost like a good representation of what the entirety of the Everlasting Plague is going to sound like? Or is there a lot? Does every song maybe kind of like play by its own rules in a way? Uh, own rules, I would say. <laughs> that song, can I tell you something about that song? It's funny. Like that song was completely an accident. The way that happened, I wasn't planning on writing like some epic, you know, with the melodic intro. Like we were just, that was screwing around at games. Like I was just screwing around with guitar riff, like that intro, the riff, the da, 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 and it was like, oh dude, that's pretty cool. I was like, yeah, I guess that could be cool. And then it just kind of turned into that, but it wasn't intentional. And that's why it's probably different than the other tracks. Okay. That album, because yeah, it, was, it was totally an accident. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Well, the greatest uh, riffs or the greatest songs even were discovered by accident. Think about how many great things we have in the world just because of accidents. Like, and I'm talking every invention, every like, every great artistic movement was started by accident. That's always how it is. To that, from artists or just anything, I guess, creative. It's like, well, it, it's like it just kind of, kind of comes out of you when, you when you're not expecting. It. Yeah. You know, and it's like, what? Where did that come from? You know, it's kind of weird. You know. Yeah. Well, that's cool. We as humans, we are what we create, and being that most of us are accidents anyway, uh, you know, that's why we create happy accidents. Sure, dude, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks, mom and dad. You know, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I kind of wanted to talk about your other projects that you've been involved in, if that's cool, actually, do kind of like, uh, you know, uh, go down memory lane a little bit, but like with your other projects, such as like Condemned and, you know, all the other uh, projects you've been involved in, is it like a different mindset or a different mind frame? Like when you were playing with Condemned or Fury Never Fades or uh, Lord of War or something like that, like, is there kind of like a different mindset or is there a usual method behind the madness that applied to every band you've played with? Good question. It depends. It depends with, uh, a lot with the people that you're working with, you know. I mean, that's everything. You know, with Condemned, it's totally different. Um, yeah, Condemned, you, I'm sure you've heard, is, is going through some hard times right now. Yeah. You know, we lost Brian uh, recently. Yeah. And uh, that was a horrible, horrible experience. So, yeah, Condemn is kind of upside down right now. But the good news is we uh, just got a new rehearsal space. Like, we lost everything when we lost Ryan. Uh, basically, have to start over. And so, uh, yeah, the good news is we got a new rehearsal space, man. And uh, we're actually getting in there hopefully this Friday. And uh, we're going to get in there and just kind of start fresh, me and Steve. And we got Clayton. And uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but we do have a new drummer we're, we're working with. And uh, the four of us are just kind of have to recreate, continue what was happening before with the with the new album for Condemn, and then we're just gonna keep pushing forward out of this situation. Then, but um, we have, yeah, it's it's just tough, man. Losing yeah. a friend like that, a band member, it's one of the hardest things I've probably ever experienced in my life as an adult. You know, absolutely, for sure, for sure, it's, tor- it's horrible. So, yeah. yeah. We're well, still getting through it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thank you for, you know, still blessing us with uh, with your great creativity and with uh, your intensity. I think you're giving us a lot of music that we've needed and resonated at the time. I was saying that uh, when we look back at these hard times, that uh, death metal is going to be the soundtrack that uh, we look back at the yeah. history books at these times. And like the way that swing music was used to describe World War II, I think the Everlasting <laughs> Plague by Pathology is going to be like nice. the the soundtrack when they show this in the history books. Cool. That's really cool, man. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. 
I wanted to talk a little bit about your uh, guitar technique, actually, because I do feel that, like, whenever I listen to any of the projects you're in, the guitar work does sound actually kind of, for lack of better words, studied in a way. Like, I really am impressed with the riff patterns and these chord progressions. Is there, like, a theoretical background that you maybe apply to your guitar playing, or do you, uh, d uh, are you completely on the self-taught side? More on the self-taught side, which in my later years, in my getting older, I'm, I'm trying to, to educate myself more. And it's something I've been really digging into uh, is actually like taking, I'm not taking like lessons in person right now, but I am like studying an instructor uh, in Austria. Like, cause it's, you can use, um, what is it, Patreon. And any style that you wanna learn, anything like, the videos are so well laid out. And it's, I'm really like digging into technique, but honestly, I'm getting into that more recently and a lot of the writing, the, the record was already recorded. We, we had the recorded, uh, rec we did the record back in uh, January, I think it was time. We've been sitting on it for this whole time. So I hadn't even discovered this guy that I'm learning from now, back when we recorded the album. So all of that is like, you know, mostly just kind of putting it together, not music theory, and it just more in my head what sounds right. Yeah. You know? Well, I think there's I think there's a talent on both sides. It's cool to know music theory left and right, but I think it also to be able to yeah, just yeah. take a bunch of sounds that maybe you're not familiar with or not knowing what they are and cultivating them, putting them together into a composition that works. I think that's a separate talent in itself. Like some people are so enslaved by theory that they wouldn't even think that maybe these two things go together. But I think people who work by ear like you are just able to utilize feeling and there's an art to utilizing feeling as well. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So I think the, the, the powerful thing is if you can combine both of those aspects, you know, which is more of what I'm trying to do now. And I'm really excited. Like I'm excited for this album, but now that I'm putting in the uh, kind of study, you know, the nerdy stuff, uh, the next album, I'm really excited to see like how we can even top this one. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun for me. Yeah. So the nerdier, yeah, we'll the better. You. That, that that's yeah, yeah, that yeah. that's a that's a pill that it's very hard to swallow for a lot of death metal fans. But the nerdier, the better. Nerdier, the better, dude. I mean, that's what it is, right? It's like complex math, you know, math problems. You know? Yeah, I mean, Chuck so. Schuldner, who is pretty much the father of death metal. I love the guy, and I have nothing in the world but respect for him. But he was kind of nerdy. He was a kind of a nerdy guy. And look at the yeah. fucking sound of Perseverance or Crystal Mountains, you know. Yeah, it's pretty common. Yeah, a lot of dorks out there. I'm, I'm guilty, guilty. So yeah, yeah, no complaints. And speaking of nerding out, actually, because I, I, you know, we're kind of approaching now towards the end of the year or in the final quarter of the year. I think that this was, I think, one of the best years for death metal ever. And you guys are part of it with this pathology album. But like, I mean, you know, we with the new Cannibal Corpse, the new Carcass, the new At the Gates, like so many great albums. Has there ever been any like a uh, you know, and great old school death metal bands putting us up and some new uh, comers on the rise as well. Has there been any uh, new death metal albums that sort of uh, fancied your attention? Mm. I, I I don't know, off the top of my head, the first thing that comes to mind, honestly, is I'm having a lot of fun with is that new Carnifex uh, thing that they just put out. It is, they're just redoing some of the old songs, which they did it really well though. That was super cool. I was like, dude, it's so heavy, man. Uh, those guys are cool. And we just saw them, like I said, you know, like what was that last week live with Black Diamond Murder and After the Burial. Uh, so that was, that was really cool. But off the top of my head, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. It's, I'm, I'm wonder if I could look at my playlist here. Cause I knew this was going to come up. And every time someone asked me a question like that, I'm like, oh, what have I been listening to lately? You know, like your head, like I get flooded, you know? Uh, for me, though, I've been listening to a lot of old stuff, I think, dude, like a lot of old albums. Uh, what, like, what? what a, like, so, like, I've been listening to a lot of, like, uh, older Behemoth albums, honestly, and Belfagor. That's oh. on my list. I was like, yeah, check your Spotify. What have I been listening to? Yeah, well, you, you can't know? go wrong with either one of those, too. I saw Belfagor yeah. in 2019 on Devastation on the Nation with uh, Dark Funeral, and it was epic. <sighs> That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. It was awesome. Yeah, and Devastation on the Nation. That was going to be the lineup of the year in 2020 with Rotting Christ and Borknagar and Abigail yeah. Williams and Imperial Triumphant and Wolfheart. Awesome. Like, that was going to be the lineup of the year. But, oh. Uh, Crazy, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, that, that would have been one for the books. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is the most difficult one. Are you ready? Ugh, I don't know. But yeah, go for it. It's yeah. about songwriting. How do you know when a song is done? Hmm. That's not hard. That's not too bad. Okay. So you know when a song is done? Uh, when you send it to the rest of the guys and everybody's cool with it, <laughs> basically. Like, but no, that's how it is. Like, we'll fucking, we started at Dave's. It comes back to my place or Ricky, but you know, with on bass. We go over it, we bounce ideas, and then we sit, actually we send it back to Dave. Yeah, Dave kind of get he's like, you know, the final say, and then he's like, yeah, it sounds good. We'll change some drums or whatever, and then we're done. And I'd be like, okay, I think we're good. Okay. So, uh, I think that's usually how it goes for us. Fair enough. Yeah. That was simple to the point and collaborative. It was beautiful. It it has mutual satisfaction. Yeah, there's nothing too like you know built up. I mean, it's it's kind of how it goes. So. When everybody's happy, everybody's like, yeah, it sounds good. But, all right, done. Let's move on. Happy in death metal? You guys are posers, man. No, I'm kidding. But, yeah, uh, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and everybody's not can Yeah. <laughs> Stoked, bro. Yeah. Life <laughs> metal. That's what you guys are. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I know. But uh, before we go, uh, first off, I want to thank you so much for your time today and for such a great uh, discussion. Uh, is there just anything else with Pathology you'd like to promote uh, for the release of The Everlasting Plague? Obviously, because of this virus that shall not be named obviously you know touring is still up in the air in some aspects but i guarantee we'll be seeing pathology on the road quite a bit right i hope so yeah we got if the shit that we have in the works dude will be for next year um so hopefully we got a big one i don't think i'm allowed to say anything but hopefully in march springtime uh which yeah that'll be good hopefully we can get back to europe uh next year that's we're talking about that and um just continuing forward but it's just with uncertain times it's hard to book anything right now because people are booking and they're like oh sorry it's not gonna work out and that's what's so frustrating about this whole thing yeah you yeah know, so it'll be worth fingers the wait. crossed it, it'll be worth yeah. the wait and i think that you should play the everlasting plague in its entirety on that tour because a the album is epic i would love to hear this album in full on stage and what a great outro soundtrack you know Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I forgot about that song. That's a good one. Yeah. It's funny you say that because we talked about that. We're like, we should just do the album, maybe. Like, I don't know. It's kind of fun. Yeah. It's been, alive, you know? It's been in lately. Like, I've seen bands do it with their new albums. Like, the Black Dahlia Murder did that in 2017, where they only played yeah. their entire, uh, at the time, Nightbringers was the newest album. But, like, uh, they played the entirety of Nightbringers, and the crowd loved it. So, I think it. I yeah, think, of course. Yeah. So. I say make it happen, and I'd love, and I think by the rates of it, it looks like Carcass is probably gonna play their new album in full because of how, how epic it is. So, but uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in, dude. That'd be like, so much fun. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So, but yeah, thank, we'll see. Yeah, but thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Pathology. Be sure to check out the Everlasting Plague. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.